We just spat gold. We just spat wow. AM country golds, and uh, and only one of us was recording, so you guys will never hear it. We just took one toke over the line. Yeah, and it was, um, it was the it was actually I would so go so far as to say the best five minutes of overnight drive ever. ever. And, and you'll not, and you'll never hear it. No, well, we were talking about things. We we're talking about uh, remember that Charles Bronson movie, Forbidden Subjects. <laughs> Kinjite. I don't think that's what it was called, was it? Kinjite Forbidden I, it, Subjects. It was Kinjite Forbidden Something? Was it Subjects? So, that was a great fucking I'm movie. Remember, that was a I'm really remembering good movie. as a child at Price Chopper where they had the videos. So let me look it up. That was, was a fucking great movie. That was Charles Bronson. That was like after Death Wish 3, maybe even after Death Wish 4 when it was just like a fucking, uh, like, oh yeah, Kinjite Forbidden Subjects. Yeah. You're right. I'm, where, I'm no asshole. He play, he plays the same character because he's Charles Bronson, but the world was so fucked up at that point that he was able to be the hero and also be racist towards Asians, like really like outwardly racist towards Asians. And then an Asian guy like fucking fingers his daughter on the train or something. What? He's married to Peggy Lipton. It's a fucking great movie. That's a fucking really raw thing to do. It's like, yeah, it's like, <laughs> like what it's a really, I, you know what, pause this episode and go rent that. I bet that's two ninety nine on iTunes. Go ahead and rent that. Call call your best girl over. <laughs> We're going to watch Kinjite for Call your best girl subjects. over and be like, <laughs> what is this? What are you? Con- <laughs> forbidden, what? forbidden subjects for you here. And what is going to happen world here? where there are forbidden subjects. Sure. It's a canon production. <laughs> Some good ride symbol there. There is a world. <laughs> not, not, not far away. And darkness. You put Bob Brown a weak man put her on the streets. A world you never <laughs> see. We have a 14 year old brought in last night. Been in town 72 hours. Oh. Gang raped, abandoned. A realm oh, of shit. good appetites. She wasn't enjoying it. Why didn't she cry for help? Because of shame. He does a finger her on the train. He does. It was Duke who put you out on the street. He made you turn tricks. Duke was good to me. Charles Bronson. Everybody on the floor. Now. Kinjite. Forbidden subjects. He goes our daughter. And she's just a young girl. It is different in Japan. A daughter like mm-hmm. Kumiko-san would be an innocent. I can imagine how that guy must feel, being the father of a teenager. <laughs> Hi, Daddy. Would you rather she were in the back seat of the car somewhere? Rita's your daughter. She's not your wife. Every desire becomes obsession. Somebody cops a feel off Rita on the bus, and you're behaving like she was raped. Okay, 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 okay. Jesus. A very long trailer. Like, yeah, we this get it. This is back in the days where people had patience for a three-minute trailer. I'd be throwing popcorn at the fucking screen. I like, man, the era where Charles Bronson could just, like, lean on a gun rack and have somebody hand him money for two hours (laughs) is, like, fucking, man, what a great era. fucking chemistry teacher in this. He didn't even make an attempt (laughs) to look tough. He's got gray, like a gray, just normal dad haircut. So good. Everybody on the, it's, like, not his best work. Peggy Lipton's high point by far. (laughs) Sure. Super good. But you were right. You were totally. I, I, I. That's the only thing I remember. Of course, that this is what I took away. Train. Yeah, is this like this conflicted Japanese guy, like fucking trying to like put a finger in this girl? It's different like, in it's, Japan. It's Japanese different. listeners, is it different in Japan? <laughs> Can I go there and finger somebody on the train with total, <laughs> it's just, it's, total impunity? 
it's kind of like drinking in public in New York. It's <laughs> against the law, but, but it's it's you know like it's 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 not worth the paperwork <laughs> for the police <laughs> to pick you up on it. Oh yeah, like some gumshoe is gonna stop me for fingering yeah, a girl on. on the fucking subway. Well, we're talking about arrest? a city that pushes people into a train with a big broom because that's <laughs> yeah. it's how overcrowded it is. Come I mean, on, it's all I mean, good. I'm like okay, copper. Okay, Serpico. All right, you're gonna arrest me for fucking fingering a girl on a train. Why don't you arrest so me for breathing too, next? <laughs> because if any person I knew in even like like a, a less than friendly sense were to be like, oh yeah, somebody like touched me in the train, like I'd hang that person by their ankles so like f- over the fucking train track. Like it's, it is the the sickest compulsion on earth. Look, it's asshole, it's different insane. in Japan. It is different in Japan. It's, uh, we're talking cultural differences here, Kinjutsu. I understand. It's Kinjutsu, forbidden subjects. You know what they say? They say <laughs> you travel and you meet other people and you learn other cultures and you become a more well-rounded person. So I used to take a hard stance on subway molestation, but now that I've now that I've been to the land of the rising sun, I, um, I've, I've softened a bit on my I, resolve. I uh, find myself craving... <laughs> Somebody's spreading me out on a train uh, with a view of Mount Fuji. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> we're on the bullet train right now, and uh, I feel a hand wandering. You remember it, that senator that uh, sat in a subway stall in Dallas Airport and kept kicking his foot under and like trying to get the guy in the stall next to him to fucking come give him the hand job? Yeah. That's okay. kind of what I do in the train now. I just sit between two men and I just like kick their feet until they notice me, and then I just yeah. I, I hope one of them will get the urge. I just pull out my issue of Downhill Skier magazine. Oh wow! <laughs> and I say, Have you ever seen someone jerk two cocks off at the same time? Do you ever have an urge? And they say, Yeah. <laughs> have you ever had a, f- of an, a forbidden urge? <laughs> <laughs> a forbidden subject. You know. um... Yeah, the guy on the left. I'm not left-handed at all with anything, so the guy on the left is going to take forever. Like, if I'm sitting between two men and they're both down, right, on the train, the guy on the right is going to get off primo. Lefty's like, just going to get fucking slapped around. Yeah, lefty's going to get he's gonna be going limp. He's going to be looking over like, what's going on over there? You yeah. know, it's interesting. <laughs> I don't believe I'm ambidextrous. I can't say it, so I'm probably not it. Um... But I do write left-handed and play guitar right-handed and drum left-handed. Like, I, I switch hit. You, uh, what hand do you use to beat off? Uh, I can switch hit. Really? If you have to cut off one hand and the rest of my life is beating off, I'd say, let me keep my left hand. But, I, yeah, I can, I can switch hit. So I wonder Damn. if I'd be, maybe I'd be a really good downhill skier on the train. I would. I think we should go to Japan and try it out. Let's, Let's use out. the shirt money to go to Japan. <laughs> <laughs> What'd you guys use that cash on? Oh, it was awesome. We flew to Japan and jerked a bunch of guys off on a train. It was fucking, it was incredible. How was your week? Uh, the, the guy asked you that question, and I say, Andrew, no. Forbidden subjects. It's forbidden. It's not, it's not right. We got Yakuza tattoos. It was yeah, fucking, so we to rode fucking girl. rice burners around. Hey, I tried to touch a girl on a train over there. It's different. <laughs> but they don't do that over there. All the girls, all the girls in Japan... Oh, yeah, hey. Oh, oh, hold on. I'm talking to my friend here. All the girls in Japan, they still have pubic hair. Can you believe it? It's like fucking deep throat over there, dude. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I'll talk to you later. Oh, you just go, you just going to piss. Okay, I'll talk to you soon. I'll see you in a bit. I had a few different people tell me that that fucking uh, I feel myself dot com bit was one of our high points I last know. week. <laughs> Never was that. I uh, and of course I was wrong. It's called uh, beautiful uh, beautiful agony dot com or something it's, like that. But whatever. it's whatever. It's whatever. Okay, I'm not picky. I went to, I, I went to I feel myself dot com and it was still girls freaking off. So I girls I feel myself dot com got all of the web traffic. Sorry. Well, now, now this other spot's going to get it. Yeah. What's it called? Kinjite? It's called Kinjite Forbidden Kin- Subjects. Kinjite? Dot, they dot got edu. girls friggin' off. Edu. Got girl, got, it's called uh, Got Girls Friggin' Off. Not Hot Girls. Got Girls Friggin' Off dot com. My name uh. is Got Girls Friggin' Off. <laughs> Andrew. God damn it. <laughs> uh, what if I told you that you would have to kiss my lips provocatively? I'd say to throw those dice away. You want me to at, throw like? Them? At what point is that a dare? 
<laughs> and also, what does that mean pro- provocatively? Breaker. What if you're both very nervous and you're like, well, okay, so obviously we're going to fucking... We, we're gonna should we this. make first date dice where you just you ask somebody out and you like, get yourself all pumped up like, oh, I'm going to I'm gonna ask this girl out. Huh? And you huh? do, and she says yes, even though you're like sweaty and weird and you like... Ah, well. it, you raise your finger before you talk. Like, oh, excuse me. Uh, like you're one of those guys. Yeah. <laughs> and you can't figure it out, so you just do first date dice. First date it says, dice. Oh, okay. It says we're we're going to a Broadway show. Shit. Great. That's a terrible first date. It's awful. Well, uh, but uh, also a, a terrible thing to do. Period. Yeah, I, I went to Les Mis once. That was cool. No, it wasn't. No, it was not. I did not go with you, but I can tell you, it certainly was not. First eight dice, ready? Spend eighty dollars. Go home by yourself. <laughs> Shit. These are terrible first Get into a dice. fight about politics before getting to restaurant. <laughs> Mention your ex. Oh, jeez. These are very misguided dice. <laughs> I can't, we should really make these. It's great. Here is a good one. Here's a good one. <clears throat> Talk about your jail time. Oh, wow. That would probably about, work, right? Uh, talk about the 30 days that you went out for shoplifting, scarred but smarter, take me for what I am, got thrown out when I was 18. What are you going to do? Went up to ACJ for boosting pills. Went up to ACJ for boosting pills from a phase drugs from a CV, the CVS near the hospital. Well, what a terrible idea. That place is like fucking Fort Knox. Anyways, what do you want to eat? <laughs> I was thinking about getting falafel. Think about well, getting you really that. dressed up for falafel. Oh, I didn't know we were going for fucking falafel. I, for I'll, fucking... Let me go throw some jeans on. Hang on a second. Yeah, I'm going to wear my old clothes tonight. We're going to get falafel. I went on a date last night. How'd that go? It was a New World Bistro. Come on. I did. Oh, ooh, I why? did. It was beautiful. Why would you do that? All right, so tell me about the food at New World Bistro. Was it like fucking, was it ribs with like a, a Pepsi Cola reduction fucking <laughs> poured on it? <laughs> I do not go in for that fucking hoopy doopy whoopy whatever <laughs> food. All right, I'm an, I'm an American. I'm, I'm a man. I'm a male. I was raised. So you born snuck in a Big Mac? Is that what you're telling me? What I did, well, I had a Budweiser. Very good. <laughs> I did have a Budweiser. And uh, I had a burger. My companion had some sort of risotto creation. I'm sure that was cooked properly. I um, looked good to me, I guess. I don't know a rice look. paste smeared onto the fucking plate. It's kind of what it looked like. It Somehow looked like. both overcooked and crunchy in the middle still. <laughs> And uh, we had some really, what, really... What is that? Oh, it's like Rice Krispies and gravy, I think. No, it's supposed to be risotto. Oh, shit. Okay. Fuck. It was nice. You don't know why it's not was nice? Because I like someone. Now, I really... did you spend $80 and go home alone? No. Oh, shit. All right. No. Well, hold on. Let's let's back up. You like somebody. Like Interesting. Somebody Uh-oh. Now. We... Hey, podcast listeners, we all know how this ends. <laughs> Gather around the creepy fire. Here we go again. Buckle up. Get your owl statues out. Prepare to throw. Um, yeah, happened really quickly. And she's really nice. And she's super cool. And I like her. And for the first time in a long time, I get it. I you get, get it. I get the... Do nice things for people because they're nice to you first. Thing. Oh shit! Would you pull her chair out? What are you doing? No, it's just like different. These are all things that I'm going in two weeks. I'm going to be like, "Fuck the fuck! I can't believe I fell for it." I'm again. so I'm so thrilled we're documenting all these things. <laughs> She's very sweet, and uh, as were the ribs at New World Bistro. Yeah. Very sweet. Very, very sweet. Oh, Dude, yeah. Can you send these back, please? <laughs> um, these ribs are so, not as sweet as you. So, then, uh, this is why I'm obnoxious to live with. Um, so then, yesterday, when we were supposed to podcast, and you texted me and said, not feeling funny. Yeah. Was well, that cover? <laughs> no, it wasn't cover. Oh, okay. No, it went before. I wasn't feeling, I wasn't feeling funny yesterday, and I was in that's, a dark place. That's okay. Yesterday, but... 
you want to talk about that? Are you all good? Uh, I think I was just overwhelmed with having to go back to work after being off for 11 days. Oh, Jesus. Um, but the, uh, you know, dinner helped. It was nice. Went late. She came back to my place. Kicked all the trash out of the way. I'm going to clean up tomorrow. I meant to today. She called me been, a slob. Been, oh, you know, I mean, <laughs> it's cool. Call me a slob. Uh, we we, uh, <clears throat> we uh, did some stuff. It's great. I really hope that somewhere in Albany, maybe, I don't, I don't know where this woman lives, she's sitting in a, a very, like, nicely manicured room. Yeah. You know, like, it's like, it's nice, a little Pinteresty for my taste, but it's nice. Um, so far, so true. Yeah. Sitting there, listening to some music made by a guy with a neck beard and writing in, like, a journal that somebody gave her as a gift. And she's, right now, she's writing, I feel like I can fix him. <laughs> Fuck. That's that's what I hope right now. I really hope. I really hope. This woman is younger than me. Consider Get the fuck out. Are you serious? <laughs> <laughs> well, how'd you pull that off? Wow, I don't know. I mean, she was considerably younger than me. Very, very beautiful. Um, I, I don't know. Have you ever dated anybody older than you? Like, notably older than you? Uh, yeah. 40 to my 27. Damn. All right. Yeah. And uh, she uh, didn't go good. Didn't go well. Yeah, it doesn't sound like it. No. Wasn't good at all. I never have. No? No. Yeah, good for you. You're quite a coxman. Yeah, I like... You like that young I feel stuff. like I should have. Right? Like, now I can. Like, that, that time in my life is gone. <laughs> like, unless I'm going to get into something weird. Like, there, there's no one older than me. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, no, I, never, I never, never did that. Wow. Interesting. You should, I mean... You know, I just really like, I just, I can't even, I'm not even going to get into it. I just, I I can't. See, now that I'm, now that I've been laid, multiply. Multiply? Multiply. I am, uh, I'm no longer filthy, dirty, and pent up. Oh, but you're just like, you're like even keel now. I feel good. Even keel and not feeling funny as a result. Like, ah, you know, I've been thinking about this podcast. Maybe it's not a hot idea. Maybe we should. What? Maybe we should do, like, seasons. We'll just do, like, you know, like six months on, six what? months this off. This is your idea? No, I'm fucking talking about you right now. No, of hell not. no. I'm, I'm in it to win it. I need One, this podcast. No, this, this is what girl, keeps me sane. This I, girl Podcast is... and sitting in a sauna. That's the only thing that, that fucking, that, that gets me going. What I like about this, yeah, what's well, good. What I like about this girl, she's creative, she's driven. And she drives me to do what I do too. It's nice. It's a partnership. I don't. I we're not really like strongly dating yet. I was gonna say you went on like a date. Hold on. No, we went on a couple. Oh shit. No. Oh, everybody, this is getting wild. What? I'm, I'm excited for you. I'm happy. That's really nice. That's oh, fantastic. Thanks. I'm glad. For once, you're. I know you're waiting for the bottom to drop out and. So am I. But <laughs> Waiting's a strong word. I just, you know, like, you know, I just, it, if it were to happen, I would simply capitalize on it in a comedic way. Hey, it's fine. You know, it couldn't happen to a nicer guy. I, I try hard. You know, the past few women I've been with have been, uh... Fun. <sighs> not not great. So, um, <clears throat> if this could be something great, that would be really nice. I'm trying to think of people you've dated in the past that have been chill God. you don't have many of them one you got a couple one one mm, yeah like one like truly chill like chill to the bone like fucking spuds mckenzie <laughs> like <laughs> like so chill like house is on fire and they like gently rock you awake and granted i don't know most of these women so it's kind of whatever but yeah yeah one i i one maybe two but yeah yeah like one or two that's yeah. it yeah I don't think I, anyone would mistake me for being like a chill dude. I'm pretty intense, but lately I've been really chill, and I feel very comfortable with this person. So I'm, I'm showing my weirdness in a lot of ways. I'm giving like the weird tests. Like I'll just talk about like, like I made up a scenario where, <laughs> like I made up a scenario where a dude was, uh, like uh, misunderstood. What we were saying, so he ejaculated on us instead of oh, giving wow. us instead of giving us water. Damn! And she was totally on board with it. 
in like a, in like an actual laughing way. I'm all fucked up, man. I'm already fucked up. I'm That's already the, like that should be your selling point at this point, right? Like, I'm fucked up. Because I and I don't even think it's you. I feel like it's just. That's how you, unless you're sort of two things at our age. You're either like married and doing really well, married and not doing so well, or fucked up. Nah, and yeah. this is kind of it, you know. I'm like, it, it, there's uh, clearly there's degrees of fucked up because you get into like, <laughs> you know, like guys with gold teeth and shit. But I mean, true for the most part, those are your options. Speaking of, uh, I mean, Rat Wild. You know how I used to have a real problem with white rappers. I do remember this, yes. Mm, it's, the scene is almost completely gone in Albany. I'm not surprised. That's um, It's actually on track. When did white rap die in the rest of the world? Like six years ago? Six years ago. Yeah, so, so three that's... Three years it, ago, yeah. Yep. It's, always... it's a shame there's nobody with any money in Albany because you could... If you're if you're six years ahead on a, a... Or if you're about to hit on a trend that died six years ago, you just fucking open your shit up in Albany. I should open a menswear shop in Albany. <laughs> I'll, I'll make hundreds if I uh, if I do that, open up like an American Apparel ish store yeah. right on Lark Street. Be perfect. You no, know, I've just kind of been thinking about dressing better. Oh yeah, have you? Have you? Oh, I'm selling ties. As a matter of fact, no, you just you find my cart in a Dunkin' Donuts parking lot. I didn't no. bother trying to fucking get a, a shop because I don't think you have any money. No, 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 because all but nobody was. Uh, they wouldn't open up a nice clothes store in Albany. They would open up a tie tack store in Albany. It would, they would t- overthink it to the point where it would reach such a level of specificity that they would just open, like, oh, we, artisanal tie clips with skulls what if on I them. I did that, though? What if I opened the illest menswear store in the country in Albany because it's cheap? Like, the illest. <laughs> like, uh, and, like people stained travel. walnut, everything beautiful style. And, yeah, like the kind of thing people would travel for in Albany. Oh, shit. Oh my god! Oh that's a, shit! That's a negative fifty thousand dollar idea. Yeah, I know. God, I have so much money to lose. It's gonna be amazing. <laughs> it's gonna be amazing. You you earn that money. What are you gonna do with it? Are you gonna sit on it, or are you gonna spend it and use it toward the greater good? Well, I guess I missed the Kentucky Derby, so I'm gonna open a menswear shop in Albany instead. And you could leave clothes out at the end of the night for homeless people. Yeah, exactly. Oh my god, the homeless people are dressed so well. Can Realistically, I though, I probably could do it and make it look somewhat nice and just sell, like, $20 Oxford shirts made in China for, I don't know, 78 bucks, <laughs> and probably do okay. Purchase, like, purchase menswear by the container, <laughs> like, from China, <laughs> and, and, and iron it and put it in, like, an artisanal bag and sell it for 100 bucks. Oh, that'd be so good. It'd be like, L'Amour, made in China. Oh, yeah, we got some good, uh, got some good clothes coming in. A lot of good clothes, and never use the never use any other term but clothes. Run running around in fucking uh, New England Patriots Super Bowl champion T-shirts. <laughs> we got oh yeah, okay. We'll bring any people in off the street. Hey, you know, uh, need you to model. Do do like a very nineties thing where they have live models in the front window. Remember that? That'd be really good. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody you, DJing, uh, but they're just playing the same Wire record over and over and bobbing their head. Oh, it's going to be a fucking killer place. A Wire record that came out in 2009. <laughs> <laughs> and they're just like... With it's actually, it's a live record from last year. They really got better with age. Oh, fuck. They got great with oh, age. Oh, fuck. They got, you know, you... I mean, I, it's so weird, but they're actually... I'd rather see them now than back then. <laughs> My men's restaurant is just going to be called All Original Lineup. It'll be, it'll be <laughs> fucking thrilling. All Original Lineup, Dad. Perfect. I'll tell you what. I mean, I went out to Northampton, and I saw them. And I had to work the next day, but I stayed until 1 o'clock. They played for three hours. They played everything. It was awesome. They I, haven't missed a step. I, now, now comes the part where I have to admit that I saw Wire recently, within like the past couple of years. Uh, they did a thing that I really love, where they pulled shit that nobody in the audience wanted to hear from their catalog, and they love played it. it for an hour straight. <laughs> it was so good. They played one song off a of Pink Flag, and then 19 songs off of records you could not fucking name with a gun pressed to your temple. It was really so good. pretty good. That's great. That's totally wire. We play the one song everybody knows first, so everybody comes in. And then beat them over the head with the shit they don't want to hear. It's pretty well done. We did that a little bit. A little bit. We also not enough. Definitely not enough. 
No, oh, not enough. Speaking of music, I've been playing a lot. And yeah, I heard you skipped the show. Huh? Or you turned down a show or some shit. No. Oh, no. Uh, I'm, I'm, re- I'm talking about that stupid article. Never mind. Oh. <laughs> that fucking article. Did we talk about that last time? We did, but I, now more of them are showing up, and they're even more hyper-specific local, and it's making me really sad. No, it's so sad. It's really fucked up. Like... Everybody listening, tell your friend who's thinking about starting their mock news site to not do it. Please Come don't. On. The hard Come time's on. really bad. Come on. Like, real bad. You should, Come I mean, on. and it's like you, I'm on the, uh, I jo- <laughs> for whatever reason, I thought one, a couple of the articles when they first started were funny, right? Concept, very funny Concept. when it started, when you know, they, fell off. But, but they started, ma- they were actually, they were making actual fun of things and people, which was great. You know, like the, the the Deaf Heaven Basis Falls Asleep article I thought was hilarious. Not really hilarious, but I thought it was neat, tongue-in-cheek, whatever. So I was like, oh, this is going to be, you know, this is going to piss some people off. I'll join. So I'm somehow still in the editorial pool. Yeah, you're locked in. I'm locked in. But you should see some of the ideas that don't make it to print. Oi. Oi. I should actually read some of them. Um, they are brutal. But yeah, don't do a fake onion, ever. You're not that funny. Yeah, just don't do it. You're not. Because the onion's got to cover it. It's like saying you're going to start a fucking band that sounds like hot water music. Yeah, it's been, it's like, yeah, don't, just don't do it. Just don't, don't do some, do the other thing. Do the other thing. Do the water thing. <laughs> do the water thing, for example. God damn it. Tender well, You love. really, like, you put me in a space with that last episode. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah. So uh, I'm I'm glad that uh, I'm glad. Thank you for everybody for the praise that uh, that episode. It was a high energy episode. This is a low energy episode. I had low expectations when we pressed stop. I was like, all right, well that'll be you know that'll be a forgettable one. <laughs> that'll be a Black Dallas episode. The Black I stand by the Black Dallas episode. God <laughs> damn it, that shit's great. But I'm playing it. I'm playing an outdoor street festival this weekend. That's so good. Art you and you're gonna make look. a fucking love connection for Pete. I really am. I'm just going to talk like Pete the whole time. I need somebody to video it. I'm going to ask somebody. I'm going to offer the world. I'm going to do what everybody does when they're on Facebook the day before. Offer somebody $20 to film my show. Jesus. Uh, Is this uh, Tulip Fest or Art on Lark? Art on Lark. Farts on Lark. And I'm opening up the whole shit at high noon on the Madison Avenue stage right in front of the Dunkin' Donuts. And nothing nothing more, you know, Albany than art. Really, really good, not derivative, <laughs> not poorly executed, not, like, grossly over-the-top art. It's going to be awesome. And I don't know what the fuck you're talking about, because the best art... This is the state of the arts. New York State. This I is the actually... State I want to walk through Art on Lark just to point at people who've been there doing the same bullshit for 20 years. I'm like, still doing it, huh? Wow, you still have, like, the belly Still wearing ring. the eyeliner, huh? Okay. Wow, you're still making, uh, like, handcrafted belly rings, huh? Yeah, Alyssa Halloran going strong. She's right across the street from me. Oh, yeah. Hey. Oh, yeah. Well, she, you know, she has a postcard. She has some postcards, handmade postcards, and... Some, uh, you know, some other stuff. Maybe, like, you know, the sand. Like, you put, you get the vase and you put different layers of different colored sand in it. Oh, so the shit you buy for fish tanks. <laughs> yes. That's sick. That That's kind sick. of stuff. But they also have fried dough, dude. All right. Fair enough. Or, uh, elephant ears. <laughs> you want to try an elephant oh, ear with me? I used to hate Art on Lark so much. It was so obnoxious. Why don't we take oh, the shirt fuck, off? Especially when I lived there. Fuck. Like, when I lived on Lark Street and I have to just, like, deal with that bullshit. I remember when you lived on Lark Street. Yeah. I totally remember that. That right spot. You lived off I think of about Street. it back. It was actually, like, the spot was pretty kill- pretty killer. It's all right. Yeah. Uh, let's take the shirt money <clears throat> and go to different county fairs in the region. What do you say? Probably a really good use of our time. <laughs> <laughs> and money. What are we going to use the shirt money on? I loved... We, as kids used to get so fucking excited for the Altamont Fair. Comes once a year. It's a week long. We're going to go to the fucking Altamont Fair and, like, you meet up with your friends and go and raise hell at the fair and just whatever. Jack off together. 
Yo, shit. The Altamont Fair is a fucking nightmare. <laughs> Holy shit. Me and Gab and her friend went a couple years ago and had the worst time that humans have. <laughs> it was so bad. It was so depressing. We, I think... I don't know if we went up to Albany specifically to do it, but it was like a, it was like the the crown jewel of our plan. We're gonna do this. We're gonna do this. We're gonna go to that fucking Altamont Fair. And we're gonna get fucking fried dough and have a great time. Yeah. Instead, we saw a horse with one eye. Like that was that's what we saw. It was it was not great. I love fair culture. I'm sorry. All right, dude. Well, let's go. Let's just go. We'll do it. We'll do them all. <laughs> you really want to do them all? We can what? just become fair people. We'll get to know all the vendors. Fair like we'll get on the same route. Yeah, and now we'll know yeah. who oh, has God. the best fried Oreo. Imagine the sex. Oh hell yeah! Oh yeah! <laughs> oh yeah! Like every time you kiss a girl, it tastes like grape drink. Oh, fuck. And like, oh my God! Like they give you the grape fried drink dough and cool with... cigarettes. <laughs> like they give you the um, <laughs> they give you the marinara sauce with the fried dough because they know you're a total uh. fucking slob. <sighs> Come on, dude! Just imagine. We're going. We're gonna go. Yeah, we're going to the fair. The fun, the glory, the grandeur. Yo, let's definitely go to the Altamont Fair this year, though, right? Let's go. We're gonna like f- for sure. We're I gotta do that. Film it. I'm gonna fuck. I'm gonna talk to people. First, should we of just all. use the five hundred dollars to fucking <laughs> hire a film crew to film us at the Altamont <laughs> Fair? Call Dan Kane. It'll be great. All right, perfect. Award-winning fucking journalist. Award-winning journalist Dan Kane from Vice News. <laughs> Please join us for five hundred dollars. No, not just for you, for you and your crew. And we we're will not putting also you up. get you Oreos. <laughs> yes, you have to find your own way there and back. <laughs> yes, watch me eat fried Oreos. Uh, watch me and Andrew get tanked on Bud Light. Not be able to find the car. Mercifully. <laughs> And uh, that's a wrap, guys. Thanks. Great camera work, guys. Thank you. Really good. Great we'll cam- pay you by check. Yes. We'll pay you, <laughs> pay you by rubber check. No sweat. <laughs> or you could, you know, I could, you could uh, have a B roll. Trying to drunkenly navigate Venmo on a fucking phone. <laughs> Two in the morning. Everyone's sitting around uh, real tired. Hold on. So, what's your username again? Is it, uh, is is it like a blue mm, picture? I, you mm. know, I always use PayPal. You have, I know you're, I do, I, we toured together, I have to still have your email. What's this what? for? What should I write? Like, for tax purposes, what should I write? <laughs> I'm going to go yard on this uh, girl. Hold my beer. Hold, actually, I'm going to take my beer with me. Hold on. I'm going to take your beer, too. I grab your beer and my beer. All right. You, me, Sean Duty, Altamont Fair this year on video, making Boom. it happen. We're doing it. I talked to the good man on Facebook chat. Really? How's he doing? He's doing all right. He's really busy. Okay. He seems to be in a dark tower, as always. Ah, oh, what's the problem? However, <clears throat> I don't know. Let's get this bitch on the phone. I, we should. Well, let me call him. I'm calling. I'm calling him. I'm calling this one. I don't even have his number. Hold on. I gotta find a way to fucking do three-way calls on this thing. <laughs> but the sound of the um. Oh, uh, we're we're gonna have a special guest on next week. Are we real? Do you want to clue me in on this, or are you it's just going to let friend, this happen? Uh, uh, well, no, actually. No, I'm not going to tell you. Shit. It's going to be a surprise special. All right, guest. cool. No, cool. His, his, na- <laughs> his name is Odai, and he okay. is from England, and he has a great accent, and he knows a lot about music, and he has very funny quips, and we're going to have him on. It's going to be like when Jeff the Drunk calls the Stern Show, where we're going to have This is a reference on. I don't get. <laughs> Okay, it's going to be like if, uh, you know, just like a regular caller calls and we can have the, either have him on for a minute or have him on for an hour, depending on how interesting he is. Interesting, okay. But it's more just to test out if we can do Skype three-way calling for future. We can, we just can't record it. That's the trick, because I just pulled up the dial pad and like, I got Sean Nudie's number, I'm just going to fucking dial his ass in. And then it occurred to me that the recording mm. will just be you and me talking to a person who does not like there. Can so you please that's not record work. that, though? That would be great. Hey, yeah. hey, good. How you doing? Oh, that's, that's <laughs> great. <laughs> okay, okay. Oh, that's, that's, I can hear him. That's Sean Goody. Well, he's working in a restaurant. And uh, he's doing a lot of other stuff that's real good. All right, Goody. Here we go. We're going for it, dude. Excellent. That's for Sean. Tell him I wish desperately to be able to talk to him, but I can't. 
I'm gonna tell him like he knows. Like at this point, if if you ring even once with our num our numbers, he knows he's being recorded. I think the why do I think the ringing is funny? <laughs> you know he's standing there wondering when she pick up. Yeah, don't fucking left button me, motherfucker. You've reached Sean Duty at five one. Oh, oh goody, goody, goody! All right, well. Hopefully he'll call back in ten minutes as is his way. Sorry, I was washing dishes. So so. So Costco. I don't believe the line today. So Costco, it's a fucking zoo in there. Anyway, what do you want? Oh, good. I've uh, uh, Sunny I has offered to buy our entire back catalog for a million dollars. We just need to send you some documents to your updated address. Just oh. kidding. <sighs> What's going <sighs> on, dude? Oh, that would be a great prank if he calls back. I don't think he would buy that. He would totally buy that. I he would disagree. Hold, I feel mischievous tonight. I've had a couple uh, beers. I'm glad. I, I should say like 10 grand. 10 grand, he might believe it. That would be so great. Your troubles are over. 10 grand's coming your way, pal. Tax free. Everything's you taken care of. You know what, though? Sony's too... You gotta tell him it's like Sub Pop or some shit. <laughs> that, that, like, that gets him all fucking amped, mm, you know? Mm. Good news, dude. Chris Novoselic wants to cover Jenny <laughs> you know, Lee. Chris Novoselic's at my house right now. It's really weird. He wants to give you money. He wants to give you $10,000 to rewrite the Kinjite Forbidden Subject soundtrack. <laughs> are you in or are you so in you just quit your fucking job because you just hit the lottery, motherfucker? And he's like, oh, Chris uh, Novoselic has such weird tastes. Yes. <laughs> I haven't been able to sleep since I had the idea of you guys covering the Kinjite soundtrack. Best thing is, I just I thought you just said Tom Selleck has the best taste. He really does. And I went on a whole other thing where it's not Chris Novoselic by the time he flies out to Seattle, because that's where we all have to Basis meet, Basis for obviously. seminal grunge band Nirvana, fucking Tom Selleck. <laughs> But it's like a dog when, like, you go to take it down or you go to put it down and, like, you drive by your house or you drive by the park and the dog's like, uh-oh. We drive by Chris Novoselic's house and we end up at Tom Selleck's house. <laughs> I'm just, I'm picturing Tom Selleck in all these classic Nirvana, Tom Selleck throwing his bass up in the air and hitting himself in the head at the VMAs, <laughs> crawling away. <laughs> Tom Selleck in gigantic purple bell bottoms in the uh, Rape Me video. Yeah. Yeah. Tom Selleck just saying nothing during interviews, being being interviewed for the uh, Kosovo conflict by MTV News like with Kurt Loder. Did Kurt Loder die? No. I felt like I feel like Kurt Loder died. We should call him. We should call him. So if I can look up his number and call him. This is a free form episode, guys. But if we can talk, if we can talk to Kurt Loder, who's got to be a hundred by now because he was like seventy back then. Nah, he's still alive. Nineteen seventy-two to the present. He is age seventy-one. Seventy-one. He's Why still. Why did I think that Kurt Loder died? He's my dad's age. Speaking yeah. of my dad, it was his birthday. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. I saw a photo <laughs> of him. What's going on with him? Doing great. I mean, he's still really big, and his legs don't work. But other than that, he's great. And I his bought legs him don't work at all? Like, what, he just, like, crawl around on his hands? No, he's, his legs gave out. He's a big guy. He was a paratrooper. Right. He fought for our country, okay? The paratrooper. Okay. Should I call my dad? Oh, no, I wasn't taking that away from him. Should I call my dad? I guess you could. Yeah, I guess. I just need a pearl of wisdom from my dad. Tap at the Soren looking rough. <laughs> she was so good back then. I like Kennedy. I was a huge Kennedy person. I think I might have beat off to Kennedy. Wow, damn. Yeah. That's really your fucking type, though. Shit, that's like your archetype. Oh, God. That's Look. wild. Hello? Kennedy, I think, into some Republican shit. Oh, shit. Hello? Hey, Ma. Hey, uh, this... hey Yes. Hey, you guys sound like you've been drinking wine. How's it going? Oh, <laughs> hey, what's up, bud? <laughs> oh Jesus Christ! Can I? Uh, oh, I, I got to talk to Dad real quick. We're on the radio okay. right now. He's right there. Okay. Well, you, what was that TV? Please. All right. Yeah. It was Breaking Hello? Bad. Hey, Dad. How are you? Okay. I can just about hear you. Maybe it's the phone. No, it's fine. Um, I just want to. Uh, do you have a pearl of wisdom to give 
Uh, now that you've just turned a certain age, yeah. for your birthday, do you, do you have? A, uh, we're on a radio show right now. Do you have any pearls of wisdom for our younger listeners? Well, well, you have to do a lot of masturbation when you're younger. <laughs> That's true. Because as you get older, it's not that you can't masturbate anymore. It's just that your balls are usually somewhere around your ankles. Yeah. The arthritis in your arm makes it almost impossible. In my case, I have a big fat stomach. See, when I had a St. Bernard, it was different. He could sit on my stomach and then I could fantasize. But other than that, <laughs> you got to keep physically fit. You know, Dad, my, did you when just? I, was younger, uh, I ate a lot of macaroni. That was my wisdom, my right dear. Dad, you know? did you? <laughs> Dad, did you just uh, admit to making love to a dog at some point in your life? No, I didn't. But he watched. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yes, I, I, you know, I used to drink a lot to be when I was a young boy, <laughs> and I mean boy too. And uh, you know, I used to. I didn't have too many friends. I had a lot of them, but not too many. This Friends. is a joy. <laughs> so, uh, Dad, you are, as usual, a natural treasure, and we do thank you very well, much. Well, well, thank you so much. And uh, and uh, we'll talk to you soon. Okay. Don't forget, don't let your meatloaf. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Ladies and gentlemen, wow. my father. Everybody. Damn. We're still dispensing pearls of wisdom. Yeah, 72 years old, just still telling bestiality jokes. Jesus. Like a real motherfucker should. If you think I'm weird, my dad is weird. <laughs> so while we did that, since I can't, like, talk, I just have to listen at that point, I spent my time Googling other MTV VJs oh, from, from my youth. Kennedy looking real rough. Adam Curry yeah. looks like the guy from Game of Thrones. That dude aged really fucking well. How is Kennedy looking rough? He's looking pretty rough. Let me look at her. This breaks my fucking heart. Time is time waits for no one, man. Time's a motherfucker. Yo, time is a motherfucker. God. The woman I'm with right now is so young and full of energy. It and sounds obnox like obnoxious. Oh, it's, she's great. She's so nice. And I'm like, I try to keep up. And it's sometimes it's hard. She even walks faster than me. It's weird. It's great, but it's weird. I, I, I am aware of my mortality. Okay, hold on, Kennedy. Who am I missing here? Who who have I not looked up? Downtown Julie from? Brown. Downtown Julie fucking Brown. <laughs> I used to come home real quick to watch MTV The Grind. She's looking, oh, dude, she's looking great. What? Downtown Julie Brown looks like... A black uh, woman from The Sopranos, like whatever the fuck her name was, uh, <laughs> Drea DiMatteo. She like straight up does. Like it's really wild. Dude, Kennedy looks awesome. I disagree. She's wearing a ringer tee. Oh wait, this is from like the nineties. Never mind. Yeah, all right, come on. Even I don't. Well, I, I would disagree in the nineties, but like well, now, especially. Know. Yeah, she looks like she's in like cupcakes and shit now. Yeah, no, nah, it's no good. But she was dating like, a Chicago Bull at one point. Oh wow. Oh, dude, no, dude, no, no. Look. Other Julie Brown not looking good The either. cover of her book is her nude. The Golden Age of MTV Through Rose Colored Glasses. That's the name of her book. It's out now. Uh, it's her nude, and the body is tight. On the you, don't, you don't think they maybe ran that through a filter or two? <laughs> <laughs> think that's, just, that's just it? That's Asshole. just how it is? Asshole. Let me have my fucking fantasy. Okay? Me and fucking Henry Rollins and her. Together, we go out, we drink a little, we go to Grace Papaya. Henry Rollins has a little shithole apartment, like a walk up fourth floor in the city. It's three in the morning. Whereas there's, there's a lot being said without any words being spoken, if you know what I mean. <laughs> we get to the apartment and it's game on. It's like a fucking boom. And I surprise myself because I last longer than Hammer and Hank, um, that's not who surprising. falls asleep in the corner on the floor because he's you know he's only a few years removed from Black Flag, so he sleeps on the floor. Oh, we're back in the '90s right now. Yeah, interesting. This I is see. this is Man, 18. Ricky Rackman. I love how fucked up this dude looks now. This is this, wild. This is Eighteen-year-old me, 
with Kennedy and Hank. We're all around the same age. This is totally cool. When Kennedy and I make, like, we, we, they had the thing with Henry, whatever, he fell asleep, and then we can't sleep because we're too amped up. And we, we do it again, but this time it's, like, tender, you know? We look at each other's eyes, and I'm like, I do a real, you ever do, you ever do that? We just, like, do, like, the hug sex where you, like, mm-hmm. hug, oh, you, like, wrap around. You're really or, connected. Yeah, you wrap around, you're kissing, and you just do the hug sex. You're in there, but you're not about to ground and pound. You're just sliding in, 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 like in and out. It's about the moment. It's about the yeah. You're in the mix. You're in the moment. It's like a fucking Enigma song. <laughs> burr, 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 doo, doo. It's like Enya. <laughs> you know, sail away. And you're and you're in love. You're in and the moment. You're in love. I mean, you don't have to fucking be. When you wake up, you don't have to be in love. But at that moment, at that, at that time, with every moment, thrust, I you were in love. I dropped a fucking beer on myself. In the moment. What, what did you say? <laughs> I just dropped a beer on myself. In the moment, you are in love. That's love. And you're fucking, oh, you look up at, you look up at him, and you're like, oh, my God, what is his fucking deal? I why, wish I Why won't he finish already? I need to go to sleep. <laughs> That's my jam right now because I'm on Prozac, and it's a fucking government project to get me to get off. <laughs> it's like I'm on like f- I'm on like 40 <laughs> minutes in, and I can't get off. Uh, I keep reading about uh, psilocybin microdosing, and how it's supposed to be really fantastic for like bipolar disorder and like PTSD and all oh that. Oh my god, that'd be great. And like, part of me wants to suggest that you try this rather than like being on Prozac and whatnot. And the other part of me is just like, that is the worst <laughs> idea you have ever had. Look, so asylum. So like, let's keep this dude low key on mushrooms all day. Hey, all day. That's great. It'll be like fucking, it'll be like uh, natural born serial killers. Yeah, exactly. Man with compulsion killers, problem. Big bag of mushrooms. It's supposed to just take a little bit. But on the weekend, you know I'm going to take two or three like I do with That's Xanax. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, like all of a sudden you'll be in traffic before I know it. Where do you go? I don't know. He was here a minute ago. Oh, my God. Uh, should we take some questions? Yeah, sure. What do we have? Uh, Hans, did you write the lyrics for Audrey Kishline? Either way, the version on the Bear Mattress EP is fucking great. So Boom. thanks. You're welcome. And no, I didn't write those lyrics. Yeah, definitely not. Um, I couldn't even find... Funny story, now that you mention it. <laughs> um, <clears throat> I couldn't find the lyrics, so I had to listen to the song like four times, five times in a row. Real good. I don't know what the fuck he's saying. And I'm not about. I'm not going to text him and be like, hey, what are the lyrics to Audrey Kishline? Because he's not going to I don't remember. even remember the song. Like, I remember that it exists, but I don't remember how it goes. I remember Sean Doody killing that song and me wanting to kill him. Anyway. Um... <laughs> Uh, so I just at one point I said uh, oh wait exactly at one point one of the lines was um, Karen Werfel what a kid which is a reference to Danny Werfel the quarterback the uh, college quarterback from the 90s wow I was like Karen Werfel what a kid because I didn't know what the (laughs) lyrics were so I just made shit up (laughs) um um I got one from me too. Andrew, did you write Deer Song? Really strong release. You and Patrick should do an SDF show where you perform all the weirder shit, Russian history, sensitive leopard. I don't even know what that is, etc. Uh, I don't know what Deer Song is, so maybe it's possible. <laughs> I have no idea if I wrote this or not. Um, I also don't. I know I wrote Russian history, but I don't think we could ever play it again uh, unless I could find like the initial recording and you just like play like a file over a PA. I don't think that's ever possible again. Sensitive Leopard was Chris M1911 I believe is Chris. I don't know. M1911 know. is named after a 45 caliber pistol. Is that right? Yeah. I'm learning a lot here. It was the standard issue sidearm up until the 90s. I'm going to see what Deer Song is. You can take a question while I do this shit. Great. Perfect. Um, <clears throat> okay, so you know how everyone says to get your porn name, you use your pet's name in the street you grew up on? I have a new system, and it works for anybody. Take your first name, change it to Sir, then take your last name and change it to Fucks-A-Lot. 
Uh, I really wish I read that before. I was gonna say you got you gotta do these a little. Uh, give give them a scan first. Guys, I'm sorry. I'm really sorry. Andrew. That's like when somebody fucking prank calls Stern and you gotta fucking hang up. <laughs> Andrew, can you teach Mike Dick to not dress like the pores? Um. I think that, I can I try. Think Mike Dick I think has he... his own is always. You know what? I will props to Mike Dick for always having the same style. Yeah, Ever since I'd I've like. Known I'd, him, I wouldn't change it. It's been baggy shorts, white socks, white sneakers, and some sort of shirt, and that's pretty much it forever. So, good for you for not changing. And I don't. I don't appreciate the tone of this fucking question. Is this it? This is not me. Boring. Yeah, no. Truth be told, I don't really know what this record is with the deer on it. Is this on Spotify? Maybe I don't know. Um, Sounds like the Twin Twin Peaks fucking soundtrack. I think that'd be sick. I like the Twin Peaks soundtrack a lot, <laughs> but um, yeah, no, I don't know what these songs are, and I can't find a spot that has it. So I don't know. Sorry. Yeah, sorry. Sammy uh, Hagar has Michael Anthony playing bass on his summer tour, so at least there's that. We haven't talked about Sammy Hagar at all in this fucking episode. Andrew. We did. You you talked about it earlier. Excuse me. Um, Excuse me. I don't think I did. No, I think this you is. Did. If you say another word, it's going to be the a the maddest I've ever been at you. This one I did. What the fuck is this? Is this what it's become? Yeah, this one I did. Play, play, let's hear it loud. Is this? Yeah, I was is listening this Fountains to Fountains of uh, Wayne. What are we doing? Yeah, do I, I have to uh, come back? Do I have to come back? <laughs> <laughs> do I, I have to come back? I was listening back? to some band that was like <laughs> just made me feel really nice, and I wrote that song. <laughs> is that you? Did you write that the- one? Is that is entirely me. Is this the same one we heard before? I don't know what song this is. This is not me. This is your song, it's not me. All right, I give up. That's it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Just listen, kidding. man. I I gotta I gotta expand my. I can't write fucking Audrey Kish line over and over again. I gotta fucking come on, get man. Out there. I gotta you, me, and Bruce to have a bit. pact. We're supposed to we're supposed to do record in the fall. In the fall. We're record the, the record's gonna be called Record in the Fall, and people are gonna debate whether or not it's Record in the Fall or Record in the Fall. End of a year, Record in the Fall. Yeah, it's New gonna be really good. Coming out. Exclusive. End of a year reunion. Get ready. Get ready. It's gonna happen. Just me, <laughs> Andrew, me, and Eric <laughs> Booth that playing music, and Patrick refusing to sing. It's gonna be. It's dumb. all the vocals are us calling him in his voicemail over and over again, <laughs> trying to see if we can get him out. It's a good idea, actually. Hello, what are you assholes calling me about? I don't remember any of that stupid shit. Okay. Uh, let's see. What else do we have for uh, for questions? I got real wrapped up in trying to figure if that was my, well, that's my song or not. I got wrapped up in trying to find a Sammy Hagar interview. So, oh, God, this 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 episode is going down the fucking tubes <laughs> quick. I love it. Um, it hasn't been easy for Caitlin. It's been very hard. The friend says, according to Halperin, oh she's thrilled. She has raised awareness about how transgendered people have long been discriminated against. But I think there's a chance she'll detransition in the next couple of years. Yes. I don't think it would surprise anybody in her inner circle. It has been much harder than she anticipated. My heart goes out to her, and I know her true friends will be there if she uh, to support her on whatever path she chooses. Not really a question. That's that's actually all all there is. <clears throat> Maybe this is an attempt to get us to say hick shit. Uh, is... def, uh, no, I'm not going to pay the troll toll on this. <laughs> Caitlyn Jenner uh, well, killed a woman in a car accident. Let's talk about that. But, um, I, mean, I, I guess I do have a question, though. Like, If you can grow up and feel like you... Uh, let me grossly oversimplify this and say, all right, l- let's say you grew up as a man and always felt that you should be a woman. And then you do it. I don't understand what thinking person doesn't acknowledge that maybe you decide, oh, maybe this was not the thing. Maybe I felt a different way. I tried something, it didn't work. Or I tried something and it worked, and now I feel the other way. Well, if you yeah, live, who cares? A, you're living a life of, I mean, you've lived it, the entire, almost the entirety of your life with it being the definition of male privilege as Bruce Jenner, where you, you're a successful, good-looking athlete with money. 
and you're white. And then all of a sudden you become a woman in the spotlight. I mean, women, I don't care if you're Madonna or the fucking woman on the corner of Central Avenue, you have a fucking hard, you just have a harder time, like, as a person in the world. I think that's really cool. <laughs> I hope that... I hope that Bruce Jenner or Caitlyn Jenner, whatever, wherever, like, she lands up or he lands up in the next couple of years, starts to, like, uh, like get, like, transracial, mm. trans species. Like, fucking why not? Who cares? Like, yo, you get one shot at being alive. Just do the fucking thing that makes you happy. I hope she Fuck goes off. with the name Carlotta. Carlotta, wow. Because I worked with a, very briefly worked with a temp who was a gr- great black woman named Carlotta. I was just hoping that's what they wrote on your Starbucks cup. <laughs> yeah, yo, fucking fuck off. Like, if anyone feels a way about this, fuck off. Who cares? Like, just fucking uh, let, let, let this fucking person live. It's all good. I've got a real talk question. Are you ready for all a right. real talk question? Is late? it about the fucking gorilla? Because I can't with the gorilla. No, I mean, come on. He had a good life. They freaked. They overreacted because it was a child. I guarantee if someone looked look like me fell in there, they'd be like, oh, well, that's fucking poor motherfucker, you know. See, I feel no way about it because, like, I yeah. In the same way, you're not you're paying the troll toll on that shit. I'm not gonna fall into no. that trap where I talk about like uh, killing a gorilla as akin to veganism. It's like fucking, it's foolish. But I will say, whether or not you believe in zoos or all that shit, I'm inclined to trust the instincts of the people who are around the gorillas all the time as to what level of caution we should take. Like, if they feel like oh, we got to blow this thing away. I don't love it. <laughs> but at the same time, it's just like, all right, well, don't. you are paid to be the, the expert here, so I guess I have to, despite the fact that I don't love this, defer to your opinion. I'm not... I don't know what a gorilla does before it mauls a child. I've never dealt with one. I have no fucking idea. I've seen internet videos where they do the other thing, where they, like, coddle the child, and I... I, I yeah. I get that that can happen. Well, the, the, I don't know. The fucking... The, the point is, your stretch pants ass phone... Or your stretch pants ass was on the fucking phone yeah, and let your kid go into the fucking tank. Yeah. It's, I, so guess we, what? That, we can't talk about the gorilla. It's so, it's so stupid. Everyone needs to grow up. Grow up. Girl, you want you to grow up? Wait, you got something to say to me down there at the end of the bar? I didn't think fucking think so, asshole. That's right. Yeah, ultimate frisbee fucking beats kickball every fucking time. All right? Yeah, what? Excuse me? That's what I fucking thought. Oh, shit. That's why I fucking... Yeah, oh, what? What, are you gonna look at me? You know, your girl's looking at me. What, are you gonna look at me? That's what I fucking thought. Uh, That's what I thought. Just as a heads up, I'm actually waiting for that Andrew's Guide to Men's Clothing in Summer thing to happen, starting my first office job in July. I just get, like... Parent black get some, pants. Get, a black get some shirt. lightweight khakis and, and get, like, a, a nice shirt, maybe linen, if you want to get a little daring, and that's it. You're good. Don't worry I about read it. in the Wall Street Journal that you should wear all black at work. Wow. That's so foolish. I wear all black at work every day. Don't do that. Why not? Actually, for your job, I think it's a great idea. You're, like, working at a funeral. I think it's a good look. <laughs> <laughs> I had a job interview. Yeah, and I like, yeah you're not in the fucking Night's Watch. You work at an office. I had a job right. interview and I wore all black. Oh, yeah, what, what the fuck? Uh, maybe we shouldn't talk about your job interview on your fucking... No, we should, on, on, we should definitely we should. talk about it. All right, I don't when it happen? I, I walked in. It was for the state. It's a real money job. Double what I'm making now. Cool, you know. <clears throat> walked in all black, feeling good. Asked you for some last-minute advice. It came in as I was in the elevator. Perfect. Yes. And um, walked in like I own the joint. Really, just like I, uh, I just walked in like the job was mine. And I As felt you should. Super confident. Asked all, answered the questions very concisely. And they ended up skipping questions. And I don't know if that was a good thing or a bad thing. They're like, oh, I think you've already answered like some of these questions. So they kept skipping. So I don't know if that was a good thing or a bad thing. But um, yeah, I think I nailed it. Love bump as his dog's going on right now. Yeah, I me. Shut up! Oh, oh! Bumpus' dog's. There's probably a fucking skunk back there or some shit. All right, I've got a real talk question. Are you ready for a real talk relationship question? Let's do it. Hey guys, <clears throat> I feel kind of silly asking this because it's about social media. Uh, fair, but whatever. Excellent. <laughs> You're the <laughs> owner, yeah. Carl. Yo. Stop it. I yelled shut up and he's like, snap. My girl has been getting jealous when I interact with other chicks on social media. 
or the even chicks, if, huh? or even if they just already like, love your style. Yeah. <laughs> chicks. Or even if uh, they just like my posts. I don't think I'm doing anything wrong, and she didn't accuse me of doing anything wrong. She just says it sucks to see that kind of stuff, especially from exes. Should I? Th- do you think I should be blocking, deleting these people? Side note, I'm not flirting with them. Hmm. No, I don't think so. Mm. Exes? Although, at the same time, all right. Well, this is a, you, you and I have very different things on exes. I don't generally have bad relationships with my exes afterwards. Like, it's it's kind yeah. of like, it, it, that's, it's a rarity. Right. So, for me, it's weird just because it's like, those are like people you say like, hey, to. Right. I mean, you, you know, that's you just share it. personal it's history at one point. It's a difference if you're like still trying to dog them out or like you're, that, keep, yeah, you're, exactly. you're keeping them in the wings and it's like it's when you're both single, it's on, you know. Like. And the other thing is I sort of get that uh, I, I sort of get that I was not built for the era in which I live <laughs> and that people do that shit a lot. Yeah. So like I, I see your girl's point, too. Mm. Um, I guess in the interest of making her happy, then, yeah, just fucking get at these people and be like, yo, um, I, I gotta go to a place you know yeah. it's uh it's been real and i'll see you around sometime if and then yeah whatever it's like if it's making your girl unhappy just fucking just just bounce that's the thing because if in the interest of the relationship and if you love her and if everything's cool if she asks you to do something i mean it's not like she's fucking nagging you to take out the garbage just something that actually makes her feel bad and it's not up to you to be like well why the fuck does that make you feel bad that's crazy it's up to you to just be a cool dude and be like okay yeah, so I changed my original answer. I'm, I'm going to go to yes. Go ahead and because uh, I, as I started to talk, I'm like, you know what? I can see the other, the yeah. other side of this. I mean, Jesus, you know, you're probably you probably annoy her ass in a million other fucking ways. The least you can do is do this for. Her. Hold up, listening to an old episode, and you mentioned that a friend of yours' mother wrote the movie Maniac. Please elaborate. <laughs> that is the entire story. There's not much to elaborate. <laughs> yes, uh, a mutual fans. friend of ours, uh, his mother, who is very chill, uh, wrote the movie Maniac. Was uh, was paid handsomely to do it. Probably wrote it over a weekend, and uh, and that's it. I also should use this time to point out that his brother, the other son of the woman who wrote Maniac has his first movie going into theaters this weekend called Approaching the Unknown, and I urge you to go see it because that shit is, like, not going into many theaters. So if you if you, if you you get your best girl and you bring her home and first you watch Kanjite mm. just to, like, warm up, and then you go out and you watch Approaching the Unknown, I would call that a pretty good weekend. What if you're watching Kanjite in the moment, like, nature calls and you need to make love? Yeah, well, then you find the nearest train car and you you get down to it. <laughs> find the nearest train car and, and finger her. Yeah, that's just that's that's how it What's goes. The quickness. Uh, this is also uh, Matt Rosenberg, uh, one half of uh, of the team that brings you comics such as Menu and uh, and things like that. So if you are into comics, then you probably know his work. Okay. I'm not into comics. I'm into dorks. So I know him from the dork spectrum. Suck. Matt Rosenberg's inner thigh sensually. Wow. Whoa. Damn, I've never considered doing that, but I, the dice are compelling me to. I mean, the dice have spoken. Yeah, there's <laughs> there's no way around it. This is, this is the word of the gods. The dice have spoken. Remember that guy Dice, dude? I, Andrew Dice Clay? Yeah. Yeah, he's back. He's he is back. He's got a thing with um. He's got a collabo with Dr. Dre and uh, Kanye West. That's not real. No, is it's it? not real. Oh, God damn! Up. Holy That's shit! That's like the definition of being back, though. DMX does yep. have a collabo with uh, Dr. Dre and um, Kanye, though. So DMX um, is back. Next bacon, egg, and cheese challenge: Whoa Hop versus Hop Key. I don't know what either of those things are. I feel like you just made up two chain restaurants. We should really. What the fuck is Whoa Hop and what is Hopkey? What is? What are you talking about? What are you ever talking about? <laughs> Let's look it up. Whoa Hop. I'm probably gonna get something way more than I bargained for. Oh, I'm looking at yeah. candy picks. Whoa Hop. This is some like New York City like fucking. I some people don't really think so. love to eat in New York City. Like yeah, love they, they to really go do. to these restaurants and oh my god. Well, like, uh, 
it's like almost too much. It's like too much of a food city to like possibly cover all that ground. Well, why why do you have to be such a completist? Why do you have to have everything? Why can't you just enjoy things? I just want to go to Sparks and get a really good steak and see where Paul Castellano died. Is that so much to ask? I, I just read that Wiley Dufresne has taken a curry and made a burger out of it. And it's not a curry burger. It's a burger made from an English curry. <sighs> I'm really thil- I'm going to try that. I will try it. And I will probably be let down, but I'm going to try that shit. I'm going to shoot this dog with a BB gun. Yeah, this dog really sucks tonight. <laughs> the fucking bumpus is sucks. Okay, so apparently Wohop is on Mott Street uh, in uh, charming little Italy, right near ABC Noria. Great. Perfect. Exactly where I am usually, in the middle of Little Italy. <laughs> hey, let's do another bacon, egg, and cheese challenge, but take two trains to get there first. <laughs> Sounds great. Where do I sign up? Let's take the G to the L to the uh, to the R. Yeah, it sounds really good. It sounds awesome. For a sandwich. Where do I sign? Where do I sign up for? The, or we could take the Q, and walk. And it, it sounds great. Let's do it. Now I do want to know what the what the thing is though, because man, I I went to a bacon egg and cheese place that was like really all about it, and I spent a lot of money in a bacon egg and cheese, and I was severely let down. <laughs> like some shit you don't fucking improve on. They have like the shitty roll that's stale and like the egg that's overcooked and when it's all part of that charm. The so I don't know what Wohop is about, but Wohop uh, is um all they have is on their website, all they have is the menu. Wohop New York City. Wohop full site. Here we go. Let's go to full site. I will. All right, fuck it. Hold on. Huh. New challenge cuz I just want to do this and I think it'd be more fun to do as a group. Let's do a dumpling a dumpling challenge. Yeah. Oh, All my right. God, that's so sick. Oh, it was so I good. So, oh, if I eat too many dumplings, I get sick. We're just going to go into Chinatown. We'll go. We'll start at Wohop, and we'll have the bacon, egg, and cheese. We'll have like $9. We'll be sad. somebody to, fill it, to um, film it. Oh, of course, of course. And then, uh, and then we can go to Chinatown, and we can just do it, it, all the soup dumplings we can find. Okay. And we'll like buy a little like dried-out octopus. We need to go to some wild. fucking deer hunter shit where they don't speak English. And be like, that just really point good. to a fucking picture of dumplings. That's where I want to go. I want Sold. I want deer hunter. I want Russian roulette. Dudes, take a minute to make your dumplings. I want that. I want Vietnam. I want Korea. I want Japan. I want China. I want fucking Sri Lanka. All right, we're doing the dumpling challenge. That's it. That's the next time I come down. It's written. It's it's we them boys, man. How did I get drunk off three beers? I don't know. Yeah, it's uh, <laughs> it's kind of getting it's getting out from under us I right now. Do you want to call it a night it. on this? No, I fucking love it. Let's keep going. No, baby, don't stop. Hi, Andrew. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm just, I got a text from work. I'm just wondering why people can't do things when I'm not around. Just let curious. it out. You need to let some of this out. Let it out. No, I got. I'm good. I'm okay. all set. Okay. I'm good. I went back to my first day of work. And my coworker told me that I was crazy for turning the air conditioning on. Yeah, I got to side with her, though. You want to live in a fucking meat locker. It like that is degrees. <laughs> and God yes, damn. I do want to live in a meat locker where they put corpses. And I wear all black uh, to work. So. I don't know what to do with you. <laughs> Andrew, you just you wear it all black. It's fucking fifty-eight degrees in the office. Like, oh, they commented it's... on that too. How could you wear it all black? It's so hot out. It's simple. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm actually a hitman, and I'm I uh, on my lunch break. I'm driving to fucking the suburbs to kill your husband. Yeah, it's really good. <laughs> <laughs> no, not Dale. Oh, I love Dale. Don't kill. I you. will do literally anything. Please don't kill Dale. God, Dale is the worst fucking name. <laughs> there was a kid I went to school with named Dale who was the quintessential dork. <laughs> and I remember course. one day he got on the but like just, total dork, like the worst, and not even like a science dork, just like a you know we'd call him an introvert today, just a fucking dork. <laughs> but I vividly remember one day he got on the bus wearing black jeans, a black Harley Davidson like sweatshirt, and like really big black sunglasses and I remember that might be the first time I saw somebody do something and I went 
oh no <laughs> like oh no Dale don't do like, it. You're, no. you're gonna get your ass kicked out like <laughs> it was the first time I had that feeling of like empathy for somebody who has tried and failed <laughs> in such a remarkable way in like oh man you flamed out hard Dale Dale flame I mean, that's, um, that's a flame out hard name yeah that's like really, a, really that's bad. like a double child support name you know what Dale you, 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 when you go to school with a bunch of dorks often they will come back in your life and generally still following some sort of idiot pursuit you know a few of them are successful <laughs> doing some job with numbers yeah, some of them are like oh I have my own HVAC company I'm a millionaire yeah and that's cool that's nice like, I can't one know. of the fucking dorks I know is just like really into like municipal Waste politics demand. and like bike lanes and shit you know like real sad real sad shit this dude has never surfaced again no. he he was swallowed by the machine he fell through the cracks <laughs> like that's you know the typical podcaster's name is Dale is that right that does make sense Dale Barnes that d- <laughs> it's funny um it's funny you see that, uh, Andrew. Um, it's funny you bring up high school because um, that's so far. It seems so. I mean, chronologically speaking, it's very far away. But when you um, when you look at it up close with a fine tooth comb and a magnifying glass, you realize that it's not that far away, and we haven't really changed as men. Thank you. That was very, I, I, I was wondering how long it was going to go. I was, I was curious. As I started to, running uh, out of breath, and I feel terrible when I do that. Jesus. <clears throat> well, this has been 118. I'm going to go. I'm going to cook dinner, yeah. and I'm going to uh, try and not think about Dale <laughs> and the sadness. Embrace. No, don't embrace your inner Dale. Remove your oh, inner Dale. Oh, yeah. Remove. Surgically remove your inner Dale. Yeah. And your inner skateboarder. Take yeah. them both out. Stay tuned for uh, episode 119, hopefully happening soon. Is this... Did I just say it's 118? Is it 118? Yeah, yeah all right. 118. It's 118 now, so stay tuned for 119, happening soon, and then the dumpling challenge the, at some point this summer. Oh we got to go on a really hot day where it's just like, unpleasant to be in Chinatown and everything smells like garbage dude, and seafood. I'm just going to want to stand in Barnes & Noble and be like, it's hot, dude. No more Barnes & Noble. That's it. It's gone. There's like a TD bank that's all in Chinese, and that's all you got. Oh, I'll just go into the. I'll go into the bank until they say something. We we should do this in like the dead of winter. But to find a ninety-eight degree day, no shorts allowed. It's got to be long pants. We We're have going to down get there. somebody to do this pro bono. A real multiple, like a one camera with a boom mic shoot. Damn. Of me just eating dumplings and talking to people. Like, <laughs> hey, what's up? <laughs> What's up, China man? What are you wow. looking at? I'm drunk on fucking Budweiser. You know where Budweiser's bottled? In fucking America. That's right. And I throw a fucking bottle cap at him. Perfect. This is going to go really well. I say, look, my father fought your father. What's up, China man? Wow. Damn. My father, my father fought, fought, fought your, your father. father. That doesn't mean we can't be cool. Give me my food. I know you're taking too long on purpose. I'm not Damn. an idiot. This is fucked up. I, you should see me. I'm like rocking back and forth. Like yeah, I can right imagine now. right now. No, I'm not. I, I don't. I, I'm not really that way. I just, you know, just playing scenario. That's all. Dumpling challenge. Coming to a YouTube near you. <laughs> Coming to a YouTube near you. Do you have anything you want to plug this week? Uh, yeah, Bear Mattress album coming out. I've got a few different labels and negotiations with me. Oh, wow. Jeez. <laughs> I've got a couple irons in the fire, Andrew. That feels like old times or people... I thought you got locked into one. No, that uh, should... I, uh... I, 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 you know, I, 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 that's the one that I'm, uh, I'm hoping and praying for, but there's another one on the line now. Interesting. Oh, fuck. So, uh, Yo, you know, get, get your offer letter fucking sweetened up, man. <laughs> thinking about doing that. I'm going to need a bus... I'm going to need a couple thousand dollars a week. I'm going to need some dumplings. And they got to be made. Yeah, all right. So just who, uh, make one of these fucking, fucking record labels pay for a film crew for a, a, a hot <laughs> afternoon in Chinatown. And that'll be the deal breaker. I would. You l- heard it here first. We should really just put out like an overnight drive record of the greatest hits. Like a double of vinyl. I think that would be so cool. 
I think that would sell not a single fucking copy. <laughs> so? <laughs> hey, we've, we're um, in a band that sold tens of copies of albums. Tens of copies, it's true. So. Still warm demos kicking around someone's basement unsold. Yeah. No, those, those, those disappear here is at Linwood's house. Still. Boxes of them. Um, this weekend, go uh, go watch Approaching the Unknown. Yes. It's in, I don't know how many theaters. It's in probably fucking 20 spots. Just search uh, a search engine and find it. New York, Los Angeles, Dallas, Santa Clara. Cause yeah. Why? Uh, Washington, Alexandria, again. Houston. Oh, Houston. It's, it's oh. either go see this movie or be shot by a drug yeah, dealer. I mean, your <laughs> choice. Yeah. Tempe, what do you want to do? Do you want to have your throat slit or do you want to uh, go see this movie? Hey, Houston. Miami, step, well, you know, step away. Hey, Houston, step away from the fucking all night liquor store for 10 minutes and go to the movie theater <laughs> two different play oh no just one in cleveland so you can have Jesus like Christ. a dork shoot a roman candle at you or you can oh, go see boy. this movie yeah, orlando yeah, miss the gas rag show and go there is literally nothing to do in any of these places except go see this movie yeah. so go see it it should be interesting just go see it um, and don't and don't be a fucking square and don't be a square stop being a fucking square it's better than any square. better than the game of thrones it's better than fucking your boring boyfriend it's true. So go see it. He's you know he's boring. Oh fuck! I can't with this goddamn dog. All right, this is <laughs> Shut up. been one eighteen. All right. Is this been, yeah, this is one eighteen. What is wrong with me? All right, <laughs> we'll see you with one nineteen next week. Bye.